Hi, I'm Brian Vance, BoardBikeTracker.com, and today we're going to break down our Yosh Works Edition Alpha T full exhaust install on our 2018 STG Kawasaki Ninja 400 project bike. Okay, before I dive in, it's really important to note there is no license plate on this motorcycle. The reason for that is this system is not street legal. This is designed for closed course operation only. Track days, racing, that kind of stuff, okay? I want to make sure you know that up front before you consider purchasing it. Full exhaust replaces everything from the cylinder head all the way back. With this, you're going to see performance gains. We're going to do some dyno work of our own later on this year when we have all of our systems. And you see weight loss. Stock full system is 13.1 pounds. The Yosh Alpha T work system is 8.1 pounds. That is a five pound weight reduction on an already pretty darn light motorcycle, okay? Works finish. What that means is it begins life with this real kick-ass matte gray look. Over time, and as you run the motorcycle and you get heat in the pipe, it's gonna discolor kinda like we see with titanium. So you're gonna get some cool bluing effect into it. And it's, you know, a little bit random, okay? In order to take full advantage of that, very important to understand, when you're done installing this, you need to wipe it down thoroughly. They recommended cleaning it with rubbing alcohol. That's what I used, okay? If you leave your greasy fingerprints on there, they're gonna burn in the pipe it's going to ruin the look of it and you're going to be super pissed. Okay, so I know you're pumped. You want to hear the note. Don't start it until you have fully cleaned it. This system ships with an exhaust insert. It was not installed in the can. Okay, you've already heard the note of this. You've got to admit, this is real good. This thing sounds fantastic. I have reached out to Yosh to ask does this bike make more power on the dyno with a full system with or without the insert? We'll update this video in the comment section to give you guys a heads up if it does make more power with or without it's typically very slight the difference is going to be somewhere maybe around three quarters of horses if that so it's a very minor difference so really if you dig the sound with it out and you like riding it on the track that way just go ahead and leave it they also do offer an optional bracket that would replace the passenger foot peg bracket here on the right side of the bike and give you that racy clean look Okay, so that's an option that's out there. Other options. It has an O2 bung back here that accepts the larger sensor like you would see with a DinoJet Auto-Tune, okay, Bizazz, or perhaps the FTECU. It also accepts the smaller OE sensor, which we have installed up front. If you're not using the one in the back, it includes a plug, which we have installed in there right now. When installing this, you're typically able to reuse your stock exhaust gaskets. We did that, and we're gonna show you that in the install. They're almost always in great condition, especially when a bike is this new. Now let's talk about tuning options. One of the biggest questions we've been getting with all these exhaust installs is, do I have to put a fuel controller on the bike? The box stock best practice answer is, to get all the performance benefit out of it, you should, at some point, install some sort of a fuel controller, perhaps do an ECU flash, okay? With that said, do you have to do it immediately? In my opinion, you do not have to do that. We've ridden this bike, we've been riding this bike with different exhausts, we've not done it, we've seen zero issues, and you can actually note the performance gains with certain exhaust installs pretty much on your first ride. We also have a Yamaha R3 2015 that we've installed numerous exhausts on over the years, it's got a couple thousand miles on it, on the racetrack, on the street, no fuel controller, no flash, and guess what? Runs great, has never blown up. So just, you know, take those examples and make your decision, right? If you're racing, if you want the perfect performance out of it, you want to get every last little ounce, then yes, best practice with a full system is to install some sort of fuel controller or do the ECU flash. Okay, we'll stop there because that seemed pretty... You gotta admit, this thing looks pretty bitching on the bike. I'm actually really impressed with it. When I think of Yoshimir, you know, in some of the comments now too, people have been asking, you know, what I think are the differences between all the exhausts. With exhaust, for me, it's a real, like, emotional purchase. If you see one of them that really speaks to you, right, you're like, man, that thing looks great and I love the way it sounds. Guess what? That's the one for you. Buy it because you're going to be happy with it, right, because you already dig it out of the box. 
Don't get lost in all these little quarters of a horsepower here and there, okay? What are the differences between each one of them? Because you'll see with everything we've installed so far, they all look different on the bike. They all mount up a little bit differently, right? And it's the nuances between them, to me, that that is kind of the attraction. So when I think of Yosh, this new Alpha T canister is pretty bitchin', man. I think it looks great. Their fit is very OEM-like. And that's something that some people can really appreciate. And not really a lot of tugging or pushing or pulling. It's just kind of very OEM-like. And you can kind of see that, too, with that bracket they have welded to that canister. You know, it gives you that OEM, you know, fit, finish, and feel. Okay, so if that kind of stuff is important to you, then Yosh is the brand for you. You know, take a look at all the videos and look at all the nuances between that. And in the end, if you like the way it looks, if you like the way it sounds, buy it, put it on your bike, you're going to be super pumped. If you think this one might be the one for you and you're considering installing it on the bike, watch the second part of this video. We're going to show you every step of the way what it takes to get it done. Cliff notes are this. you got to pull bodywork on this side. Passenger seat, Steve, will, he'll show you this. This comes off. Pull the cord, this comes off. We're going to pull this little side panel here. It gives us access to remove the side fairing. Okay, I'll show you all that. Very intuitive, easy stuff. We have a, a full bodywork video for reference to if you're having trouble, you're trying to figure out what goes where. We've got that there to back you up. It's really going to help you, especially if you're a new rider. This is not a terribly difficult install. I think most riders, if you take your time, you have a reasonable set of common tools, use these videos for a resource you need to, you're going to be able to get it done and get a great result just like we did. Before we begin the exhaust install, let's start with our stock exhaust node. The 400's warmed up and ready to go. There it is at idle. So as you would expect, that is pretty tame. We're going to start by removing the stock canister. You've got your heat shield here. There is a worm style hose clamp up at the front. You've got a fastener right here. It's four mil. From there, pull forward. You can see there's a groove here that interacts with the tongue on the top of the stock canister to hold it in place. Canister mount, 10 mil. Keep all your stock hardware, even the stuff that you may not need to reuse to install the M4 system, keep it. OEM hardware is always nice quality stuff. It's great to have spares. We've got a 12 right here. And we'll get weights on all this stuff for you so you can compare the weight savings. It will be fairly significant. Now rotate that, slide it right off. Grab that hose clamp. You can loosen that a little more. Just go ahead and take it right off of that head pipe. You can reuse that somewhere else, I'm sure. Now, the oxygen sensor. We want to remove that. There's different ways to get this done. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I don't like to pull the whole harness out typically. So. What you're going to see me do here is get some slack in it. And that's going to allow me to essentially rotate it like so. Plenty of slack. Break it loose. With the full system, M4 includes everything you would need reducers if you're going to run a different sensor here using a different fuel controller if you're just going to block it off they send all that with you so sky's the limit you can see zero issues there just rotating that i'll set this out of harm's way now we have four nuts up here at the header these are all 12 mil all i'm using is a six inch six inch wobble extension might even be able to get away with a straight one. 
at a 12 millimeter deep wall socket. So once again, basic hand tools, we're gonna to reuse these nuts, of course. I'm going to support the header now as I remove the last two flange nuts. Gotta love new bikes, they come apart so easy. Slide that down. There is your stock head pipe. Okay, before we install the Yosh header on the bike, we're just going to get it prepped up. It comes in two pieces. You've got your down pipes, and then you have the collector that's going to go back to the exhaust can on the Alpha T system. This pipe comes with stock O2 sensor bond right here, which we're going to reuse. And it also has a larger bung towards the back of the system. If you want to change the tune on the bike, if you want to use like a dyno jet or a flash tune, auto-tune device, you can put a different size sensor in there. It's going to allow you to do that. If you're not going to use that, they've also supplied a stainless steel plug that we will install before we put the header on the motorcycle. We have two springs that go right here on either side of the pipe where the collector and the down pipe come together. We're going to use the supplied spring tool. Okay, we're going to use the supplied spring tool. Slip those over. There's one on each side. Easiest to just do this now before you have the pipe up on the bike. Like so. I'm going to put just a touch of anti-seize on that bung plug before I put it in. In case down the road we do want to pull that out. We've changed our added a tuning option. I want to have the ability to do that and not find this thing seized in there. So just a little bit of anti-seize, high temp. That is a 21 mil wrench flat. Torque it down. Now we're ready to take the header over to the bike. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to inspect our stock exhaust gaskets. They look excellent, zero issues, we're going to reuse those. They're being held in place right now. There's a little grease that's around the edges holding them there. If yours have slid out, you can put a little more grease around the edges, slide them back up there. It will help hold them in place and make the install a whole lot easier. It's important the gaskets are firmly in between the cylinder head and the flange. Otherwise, if it's not flat, you can distort the gasket and create an exhaust leak. Go ahead and slide the down pipe up into position here. Grab one of the nuts. We're reusing the OE nuts. Slide that over. Let's get a couple of threads rolling on that. This is a relatively easy install. You know, the four cylinder bikes can be a whole heck of a lot trickier up in this area, but this two cylinder. Really not too difficult. Still supporting the pipe. I'll look up here and can see that I'm gonna have to push over 
on the pipe just a little bit to get it to drop into that exhaust port on the cylinder head. That really took almost no pressure. Grab another nut, grab your flange. Slide that up into position and get that other nut on there. And if you notice, now I'm using both hands and still holding that pipe up. What I did is I just kind of shifted the pressure that I was putting on that header and use some lateral pressure to just hold it in place. Allow me to free the other hand. So I use my forearm to do that, kind of braced up against the edge of the pipe. Okay, now I'm gonna run each nut down, finger tight, and I want to make sure that I have an equal amount of threads protruding on the other side of the nut. It's really important that when you torque this that it's as even as possible. Also, when you're torquing it down, you don't want to tighten it so much that you're just distorting the flange. Okay, that is not how you want to do this. So take a minute and get those run down by hand. Nice and even. Okay, if you look now at the stud that's protruding from the other side of the nut after I've run those down just finger tight, you're going to notice that is pretty darn even. I do have some high temp silicone on there from our previous full system install. We do recommend that once you have it all torqued up, you put a little high temp silicone over the threads on the other side of the nut. It's just going to help ensure that the nuts do not come loose when riding the motorcycle. Okay, now we're in a position where we can go ahead and put some torque to these because they are all run down finger tight nice and evenly. I do like to do that before I begin assembling the last portion of the system. Start with one flange, put a little torque to one side and then go to the other nut and repeat trying to keep it as even as you did when you ran them down finger tight. When snugging this up, when tightening this down, it's really important, like I said, that you don't get yourself into an over torque scenario here. This is a long handle ratchet, so there's a tremendous amount of torque that is communicated to the other side of this tool, right? And it wouldn't take a whole bunch to just bend these flanges like a banana, okay? And you don't want to do that. So like right there, that's good. Come over here. So as you see, I'm going back and forth, working the nuts on that same flange, trying to get this as even as possible. Okay, now I'll repeat the process on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and slide the can over. Before I do so, I'm gonna put that one exhaust spring on. Kind of see how I'm rotating it and putting some downward pressure. Here we'll reuse our stock fastener. It's a good idea to use thread locker here. The only reason you're not going to see me doing that on this bike is because we are putting a metric ton of exhaust systems on this thing, okay? And I don't want to sit there and time after time be managing, you know, that thread locker that I put on previously. Now, let's go ahead and grab the supplied spring tool. Pull forward, dip that in there, like so. Okay, from here, 
this gets nothing but a whole heck of a lot easier. Okay, we're gonna torque down the mount here at the passenger peg. Yosh does have a bracket if you're going to eliminate and use this on the track and you don't want your passenger pegs. They do have a race mount bracket that you can purchase separately that would fit here. Replacing this give you a much cleaner, more racy look than what you see now. Got that torque. Remember, once again, I would recommend that you use some thread locking compound there. We're going to come up and put our stock exhaust sensor back in. If you've watched my exhaust videos before, you're going to know that, yep, I don't unplug the sensor. I rotate it. So I'm rotating it in the opposite direction. I will have to, to tighten it. And then we'll unwind that as I reinstall the sensor here. Once I have it finger tight, we'll go ahead and torque it. 17 mil wrench. And we'll go ahead and just tidy up the routing. Like so. Okay, that all looks good. Now, up here on the header flange bolts, high temp silicone. Just put a dot right here. Okay, we'll show you on one. You don't need a ton, just a little bit. And I want you to put it right there over the threads, okay? What that does is it's gonna hold the nut in place. If it happens to, for some reason, back off, it cannot rotate off and fall out. Very important now, before we start this bike, we are going to thoroughly clean the entire exhaust with just some rubbing alcohol, okay? You need to get all of your oily fingerprints off this pipe. If you do not do that before you start it and you put heat in it first, what's going to happen is you're going to burn all those fingerprints in there and you're not going to get a good look from that pipe, you will for sure be disappointed. So like I've shown you with any system install, I want you to take your time and wipe this down. Considering this was a full system, we're gonna go all the way from the cylinder head back to the exhaust can. Okay, I've warmed the motor. We're ready to start it and listen to the note. It's really important to understand too, this is their full race system. This is not a street legal system, you'll notice. There's no license plate on this motorcycle. We're getting this thing ready to take it to do some track time. That sounds really freaking cool, man. That is with the insert out, okay? Wow, that sounds good. They do supply the insert with this. It was not installed in the can when it came with it. We have seen situations where having the insert installed on these smaller CC bikes, it can make a little bit more power, right? We'll dig into that a little bit more and I'll try and put that in the comments section of this video to discover whether or not in testing, Yosh found the insert, you know, gave it more power or if it just quieted it down a little bit and perhaps took a little bit of power away. So we'll update you on that, but it looks great. It sounds great. And also works finish. This is going to mimic the look of titanium over time. Once there's been enough heat put into this pipe, it's going to begin to discolor 
just like titanium does, and it's a really random discoloring. It's never always going to be the same from one bike to the next, okay? So look for that, super important. Like I showed you, clean the whole system before you ever start the bike, because if you don't do that, those oily fingerprints are gonna result in some discoloring that you do not want, trust me. I'm Brian Van, this is the Yosh Works Full exhaust install on our 2018 STG Kawasaki Ninja 400 project bike.